Sorry. Good morning, San Diego. I'm Sandra Moss. And I'm Dan Plant. Thanks for joining us today. It is Friday the 13th, March 13th, and Congressman Brian Bilbray has made a couple of requests to Committee for Armed Services in response, number one, to the wildfires and the war in the Middle East. And Congressman Bill Bray is here with us this morning. We're also talking about the situation in Mexico, which yes. I think is what we're going to jump off on this morning. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Honored to be here again. Thank you very much. Right on. Front and center on the uh, paper once again, the U.S. plans responses to the violence in Mexico. Uh, problems are already happening in our country because of it. Absolutely. And that's where it's really important that those of us here in San Diego along the border who really kind of know this issue up close and personal really get the message back to Washington that this is something that they can't overlook. That's why I sent um, a letter to the president and said, while you're concentrating on winding down in Iraq and taking care of Afghanistan, don't forget this. They're finally now starting to look at this. And I guess the real secret is to have them be brave enough to do the right thing and not try to play it safe. Calderon, no matter what you may think about the president in Mexico, he is doing extraordinary work and is brave to take on these the drug cartel. And we darn well ought to be brave enough to be able to um, engage with him on this thing and help him, help him win this battle. Since so many of the drugs are coming into the United States, there is a kind of a, a culpability on our part in all of this, isn't there? There's a culpability from demand. you got to understand, this is sort of a, you know, you're talking about drugs, you're talking about contraband, human contraband in the form of illegal aliens mm -hmm. that carry the drugs, you're talking about guns going south and money going south. Yeah, we're all involved with this. And, it, and it's not just the people that are using, you know, hiring illegals and, and using drugs and selling guns. It's also the fact that we don't control our side of the border. It's kind of interesting. I was just seeing that people say, well, we don't dare put our troops at the border. And I'm not saying do that, but I say don't rule it out. Mexico's put their troops on the border. They recognize how bad it is. And so we ought to be controlling our side. They definitely are doing everything they can to control theirs. Yeah, well, the city of Juarez, as we uh, talked about last week, has been taken over by the Mexican military. Right. Uh, there's a, between 20 and 100,000 right. troops in Juarez taken over right. the city completely. Absolutely. Now, you have suggested, not pushing it strongly, but you have suggested using some military, homeland security possibly, but you're getting a lot of resistance from these guys who don't live along border states who simply do not understand what is going on here. They are so worried about somebody may be offended. Dan, are you offended? Do you feel threatened that Mexico's put their troops in Juarez? No. Frankly, I it's more of a security. Secure. Absolutely. And that's what they don't understand. And it's sort of absurd. you got people that will vote to send American troops all over the world, Korea, you know, the Middle East and Europe, to secure the borders of other countries. But God, you talk about protecting our own neighborhoods and actually fulfilling our responsibility to our neighbors of securing our side of the border. They come unglued. And I think they got to rethink it and I guess what we have to do is bring a reality check that this isn't a game we're not playing political ploy here this is reality people are being killed we're losing about a thousand a month so far the last couple months and six thousand at least last year um, they've got to quit playing it safe Calderon has stopped playing it safe he knows this is a, a life and death struggle against the drug cartels and we ought to be brave enough politically to do the same thing. You sounded the alarm way before anybody was talking about this, and you did b b talk to the president about this. What has his response been? What do you see Barack Obama, the president, doing about this issue? At least he said, I'm willing to look at this. My biggest concern is, Mr. President, we were upset with the, the slow delay of the Bush administration, the excuses of the Bush administration. A lot of us voted for change, and we hope to see that change in your administration, that you'll be bolder, braver, and more cooperative with Mexico on this thing. And so well, I'm going to try to push and continue the pressure, because if we don't, who's going to do it? And you know, we're running, I meet with the, the, the ambassador from um, Mexico periodically, and like he said, his biggest frustration now is you've got a senator from Vermont, Leahy, who's obstructing us getting equipment down to fight this battle because he doesn't like Mexico. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Leahy, you sit in, in, in Vermont safe and sound, but we're on the front line here. And I resent a senator who's that insulated from reality, obstructing our ability to cooperate with Mexico to make sure we win this battle in our own backyard. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about uh, a couple of other things. This stimulus bill and this money is supposed to start trickling to the states in the next couple of days or maybe a week or so. What do you see us benefiting from that particular stimulus bill, call it pork, call it payday, whatever you want to call it, 
it's coming to California. Yeah, yeah. I have even did a show with Bob Filner, and Bob and I have worked together in local government for years, and we disagree with a lot of stuff. And even Bob says, my God, all the pork is in this. <laughs> but there's going to be benefits into it. We're going to see into it. Um, you know, and we will hopefully maximize the benefit of this. The biggest problem is nobody knows how we're ever going to pay for it. And I wish they would take in the time more than nine hours um, that um, it was dropped at 10 minutes to midnight, and then you were expected to vote on it, or at least start debate at 9 o'clock the next morning. This is why we're supposed to have a waiting period, and they waived that waiting period um, and didn't allow the time to be able to look to this over 1,000, you know, I think it was 1,150 uh, pages or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to get some benefits, and we're going to get um, pieces in there that, that are going to be spread out on transportation elements. Hopefully, that's where some I road really road projects. See. Absolutely, that's yeah. the one thing, mass transit, and we're going to see some of those improvements in there. But our biggest problem is California really gets about half of our fair share. And that's a big concern. We always get shortchanged because the perception that somehow California's wealthy, it doesn't need it. Go talk to our, the, the governor and the <laughs> legislature and saying that we've got more money than we need. Yeah. Is this it for us? Will there be more money coming? Uh, maybe people are talking about a second stimulus package? Look, we are on the average in Washington of spending a trillion dollars every other week. So, yes, they're already lining up to do this again. And I hate to say it, but my concern is that Washington always uses crisis and as an excuse to move um, um, other agendas that's not directly related. The chief of staff of the president said, let no crisis go unexploited. Um, I think that kind of cynicism really upsets people. And I, I think that we're going to have to sit down, slow down, and start justifying why we're putting our great-grandchildren deep into debt. Yeah. Pelosi... Um has said as much that there will not be another stimulus package and as being the house speaker she probably wield some power there so i guess they're buckling to the pressure and seeing what the american people are saying and probably not another one there is an interesting push and pull and push going here mm -hmm. between obama and nancy pelosi there really is i mean we're starting to see that's the real struggle going on and that's going to be interesting to see san francisco battling south chicago <laughs> Um, we're starting to see some interesting, interesting conflict there. I think I know where I put my money. Well, this is why the founding fathers separated the powers. That even if they're the same party, they're not the same people. Right. And human nature being what it is, everybody wants to be first in line. And and Pelosi saying, "Look, I'm elected speaker by the Congress, not by the president." And the president saying, "I'm elected by the people, not by the speaker." So there is this push and tug. And frankly, that's why the the founding fathers engineered it. So we'd spend more time fighting among ourselves in Washington than turning on the American people. I wish we'd work together to um, help the American people rather than uh, get the egos in the Well, in the way. change has come to Washington, no doubt. Do you see things, uh, good things happening for our state in the future? What's the rest of the year going to look like? Well, I think it's going to be really tough. I mean, we just got to look at, um, there's a whole lot of things. What I'm trying to do is get people working together on certain efforts. And a good example is the stimulus package and the issue of addressing climate change ought to be coordinated together. But we ought to be working together. Right now, this week, I'm going to be introducing um, driving a new 100-mile-an-hour vehicle that can be electric or gas onto the Capitol grounds to show Washington the absurdity of our regulations that you've got a car, but just because it has three wheels, though it passes all of the crash tests, federal regulation doesn't allow it to be counted as a car, even though it has all the safety and all the equipment by a stupid regulation. And we've got to eliminate these barriers yeah. to innovative approaches. We've got to make it legal to do the right thing for the economy and the environment. And that's going to be the biggest battle we have. You keep hearing people talk about for climate change, for energy independence, to save the economy. We need a Manhattan Project. They keep, you keep saying it. Well, I'm sorry. If you try to do a Manhattan Project today, it would be illegal. We have so many federal regulations, you could not legally do that. Yeah. We need to straighten that yeah, out. We need to give the incentives to the folks who are doing good stuff out there, like cars that run on electricity and wind generated power. And Allow natural like gas to be dispensed mm -hmm. at home. You have natural gas, but it's illegal for you to put it in your car. It's absurd. That so you're going to be taking your car to Washington. It sounds like a good photo op to me. Well, we hope to do donuts in the lawn in front of the Capitol. <laughs> very nice. Congressman, thanks so much for, for stopping by. I appreciate your time. Thank Great you very much. Great to see much. it in the House here at KSI. Thank you. <laughs>